Chapter 9 The Non-Cooperation Phase After the death of Lokmanya Tilak in 1920, the reins of the national movement passed on to Mahatma Gandhi. Under his influential leadership, the base of national movement widened further. A new phase began in the Indian freedom struggle. Gandhiji's work in South Africa. Gandhiji began his work in South Africa. In Africa, the black people and the Indian residents were subjected to injustice and tyranny by the British government. Gandhiji opposed this injustice and secured justice for the people there by leading them on the path of satyagraha. Gandhiji arrives in India. In 1915, Gandhiji returned to India from South Africa. He toured the length and breadth of India. He took up the cause of the peasants and workers here. He adopted the novel path of satyagraha for this cause. Satyagraha. Gandhiji used the novel technique of satyagraha for the first time in India. Resisting tyranny and injustice by non-violent ways was an important aspect of this technique. To offer resistance of this kind, great forbearance is required. The aim of satyagraha is to make the person who inflicts injustice on others aware of the truth and justice of the matter and thus to bring about a transformation in his or her opinion. Gandhiji taught that a satyagrahi must never resort to violence and untruth. Even an ordinary person can follow the path of satyagraha. That is why people in India and the entire world chose the path of satyagraha to resist injustice. Leaders like Martin Luther King in the United States of America and Nelson Mandela in South Africa who struggled for the rights of the black people were greatly influenced by this way adopted by Gandhi ji. Champaran Satyagraha In 1917 the British planters had forced the peasants of Champaran in Bihar to cultivate indigo. Gandhi ji did a satyagraha to resist this exploitation and secured justice for the peasants. Kheda Satyagraha Due to constant famines the crops had failed in the Kheda district of Gujarat the government had compelled the peasants to pay land revenue the local peasants therefore started a no tax movement in Kheda district in 1918 Gandhi ji accepted the leadership of this movement very soon the government waived the taxes the workers struggle in Ahmedabad There was a tremendous rise in the prices of daily necessities during the first world war. Even then, the mill owners did not increase the workers' wages. This gave rise to discontent among the workers. Gandhi ji led the mill workers in their strike and undertook a fast. The mill owners gave in and increased the wages of the workers. Satyagraha against the Rowlatt Act. The discontent against the British government among the Indians was growing day by day the british government appointed a committee under the chairmanship of an english judge rowlatt in order to check it the government passed a new act in accordance with the recommendations of this committee this is known as the rowlatt act the act authorized the government to arrest any indian without inquiry there was no appeal against the punishment given under this act this black act enraged the people all over the country Gandhi ji declared a satyagraha as a mark of protest against this act. He appealed to all Indians to observe a hartal on 6 April 1919. The response of the Indian people to this appeal was overwhelming. Jallianwala Bag massacre. The struggle against the Rowlatt Act became more intense in the Punjab province. The government resorted to repressive measures. Gandhi ji was not allowed to enter the Punjab. General Dyer issued orders banning public meetings in Amritsar. Prominent leaders like Dr. Satyapal, Dr. Saifuddin Kichlu were arrested in Amritsar. To protest against these developments, a meeting was called at Jallianwala Bagh in Amritsar on 13 April 1919 on the occasion of the Baisakhi festival. General Dyer ruthlessly opened unrestrained fire on the Anam people. who had gathered for the meeting about 400 men and women were killed in the massacre 
and hundreds were wounded. Michael O'Dwyer, the administrator of the Punjab, was responsible for this massacre. As a mark of protest against this massacre, Rabindranath Tagore renounced the knighthood conferred upon him by the British government. Martial law was promulgated all over the Punjab. Later, the Indians demanded an inquiry into this massacre. The government, therefore, set up the Hunter Committee. This massacre gave rise to a country-wide non-cooperation movement, Khilafat movement. The Muslims all over the world looked upon Sultan of Turkey as their Khalif or the Vice-Regent of God on earth. After the First World War, an insulting treaty was imposed upon Turkey which belonged to the defeated power group. This resulted in the disintegration of the Turkish Empire. The Muslims were greatly enraged by this. The movement launched by the Indian Muslims in support of the Caliph is known as the Khilafat movement. Gandhiji felt that launching a national movement based on Hindu-Muslim unity on this issue would certainly bring the British government to book. Therefore, Gandhiji supported the Khilafat movement. The Khilafat committee accepted Gandhiji's proposal for non-cooperation with the government. The non-cooperation movement began in the month of August 1920. Nationwide Non-Cooperation Movement At its Nagpur session in 1920, the Indian National Congress passed the resolution of the non-cooperation movement. Gandhiji was vested with full powers regarding the non-cooperation movement. By this resolution, a program regarding boycott of all government offices, foreign goods, government schools and colleges and law courts was finalized. Progress of the Non-Cooperation Movement The Non-Cooperation Movement received a tremendous response all over the country. Pandit Motilal Nehru, Chittaranjan Das and other prominent lawyers boycotted the courts. Thousands of students joined this movement. Schools and colleges imparting national education were started in all parts of the country. The non-cooperation movement started assuming an all-pervasive character. The British government resorted to suppression on a very large scale. The police fired at the peaceful procession at Chauri Chaura in Gorakhpur district in Uttar Pradesh. Enraged by this, the mob set a police station on fire. Twenty-two policemen including one officer perished in the flames. Gandhiji was grieved by this incident. He suspended this movement in the month of February 1922. Thereafter, the government put Gandhiji under arrest. Gandhiji was tried for sedition and was sentenced to six years imprisonment. Later, in February 1924, he was released from jail on account of his health. Along with the non-cooperation movement, Gandhiji also undertook a constructive program. It mainly included the propagation of Swadeshi, Hindu-Muslim unity, prohibition of alcohol, eradication of untouchability, popularizing the views of khadi or hand-spun cloth and national education. Due to this constructive program, the national movement became stronger in the rural areas. Swaraj Party Motilal Nehru and Chitranjan Das thought of contesting elections to enter the Legislative Council with a view to obstructing the government. Therefore, in 1922, they formed the Swaraj Party within the Indian National Congress. Many candidates of the Swaraj Party got elected to the Central Legislative Assembly and to the Provincial Legislative Councils in the 1923 elections. In the legislature, they strongly opposed the unjust government policies. They got the following resolutions passed in the Central Legislative Assembly. The establishment of a full responsible government for India, convening of a roundtable conference to resolve the problems of Indians, and releasing of certain political prisoners. The British government's response to the resolutions of the Swaraj party was not very heartening. Simon Commission the reforms introduced by the Montag Chemsford Act of 1919 were unsatisfactory. Therefore, there was discontent among the people. The government appointed the Simon Commission in 1927. There was not a single Indian member on the commission. 
Therefore, the political parties in India decided to boycott the commission. Wherever the commission went, protest rallies were organized. People strongly protested against the commission everywhere, giving shouts of, Simon, go back. They were lati charged. In one such lati charge by the police at Lahore, Lala Lajpat Rai was wounded. Some days thereafter, he succumbed to the injuries. Nehru Report The Secretary of State for India, Birkenhead, criticized the Indian leaders alleging that they were incapable of producing an agreed constitution for India. Accepting this challenge, an all-party committee was formed. Pandit Motilal Nehru was its chairman. The report prepared by this committee is known as the Nehru Report. In the report, it was proposed that India should be given a dominion status. The Indian National Congress gave its approval to this report. Simultaneously, the government was warned that if it did not accept the provisions of the Nehru Report by the end of the year 1929, the Congress would launch a non-cooperation struggle. The Lahore session of the Congress presided over by Jawaharlal Nehru in 1929 proved to be historic against this background. The Demand for Purna Swaraj The Congress objective of dominion status was not acceptable to many young Congress workers. Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru and Subhash Chandra Bose were the leaders of the young generation of congressmen who demanded Purna Swaraj, complete independence. Due to the influence of the group of these young men, the resolution of Purna Swaraj was passed at the Lahore session of the Congress. Thereby, the Congress abandoned the objective of dominion status for India. Complete independence became the goal of the national movement thereafter. It was decided that the 26th of January should be observed as Independence Day. All over the country, on 26 January 1930, it was pledged to lead the freedom struggle on its non-violent path in order to make India independent of the British power. Everywhere in the country, the atmosphere was charged with a new spirit.